This is the Luxman 5C50. It's a real-time process DC preamplifier. They call it real-time process because they've taken extra care to ensure good phase characteristics. And the DC preamplifier part means that the amplification circuit is direct coupled, which means that it amplifies frequencies all the way down to DC. So when plugging it in, all I got from the output was random plops and clicks. So this time I've actually already finished the repair, but the result was quite interesting and given the outcome of the troubleshooting, it's very possible that other units had the same problem. So we'll go through the troubleshooting process and maybe this can help you restore your 5C50 preamplifier if you have a similar problem. So now on the inside we can see it has a really nice construction. We have these metal pieces that is shielding different sections of the preamplifier away from each other so we don't have interference from one section to another. So here we have the transformer and here we have the input and output signals under this plate here. We can also see that the PCB is grouped into different sections. Here we have the power supply section. And here we have the equalizer section for the phono input, for example. And they're all labeled so you know which component goes to which section. We also have these resistors that are slightly raised. And I'm guessing that is the resistor that is producing some heat. And you want to get that away from the PCB so you don't affect other components around. We have quite a few test points here, which is nice for troubleshooting. And we also seem to have some really nice components, a lot of film capacitors, some mica capacitors. So here we have the inputs and they have the cables nicely tied together. We see that the power switch also has its own shielding box because there's a lot of current flowing through this switch when it's on and you want to shield that away from the rest of the circuit. The most common problem on these units is these DML ICs failing. As I've read, these are terribly made and they had to be replaced even when it came out in the 70s. So this IC was supposed to be here, here, here and here. And you can see this one is completely gone for some reason. But two of them has already been replaced by these two discrete component circuit boards. This is the equalizer section for the phono input. That is not what we're going to look into today. We're going to figure out why we got nothing but pops and clicks on the output. So let's get into the troubleshooting. So when you have a problem like this where nothing seems to be working, I'm getting no signal at all through this, then a good idea is to start looking at the power supply and see if the correct voltages are there. So this is the power supply section. And you can see we have a lot of test points here where we can measure the voltages. So on these pins here, we're supposed to get the AC input from the transformer. On these three we're supposed to have plus around 15 volts, earth and around minus 15 volts. And then on these three we're supposed to have plus 30 volt, ground and minus 30 volts. So I started looking at the incoming voltages and it was around plus minus 50 volt AC which seems to be correct. Then I looked at the plus minus 15 volts and it seemed to be correct. And then I looked at the plus minus 30 volts and it was not correct. So the positive voltage was around minus 6 and the negative voltage was jumping up and down from minus 30 to minus 40. So when you discover a voltage that is way above its nominal value, you don't want to keep the unit on any unnecessary time because you might damage some circuits over time. So at this point we know that some of the voltages are incorrect. So it could be that there's something wrong with the regulator circuit, or it could be that some other part of the circuit is drawing more current than it should, which may be causing the regulator to behave incorrectly. So in order to test this, we want to disconnect the regulator, and that can be done by disconnecting these two cables. Here we have the positive 30 volts and negative 30 volts. And what I did was I used an external power supply to feed the rest of the circuit. So I bypassed the regulator part for the th plus minus 30 volts. And when doing so, the rest of the circuit seems to work fine and it didn't draw an unreasonable amount of current. So 
it seemed that the problem was actually the regulator. So when having the rest of the circuit disconnected, I measured the voltages on the regulator once again. And this time both the positive and the negative voltage was jumping up and down. So there was definitely some instability problem with the regulator. So in order to troubleshoot the regulator, we will have to look at the schematic. Here we have the schematic for the whole unit. And here is the regulator part. So this we will take a closer look at. Here we have the wall plug, this on off switch, a fuse, and then we have the transformer. So this is turning 230 volts into plus minus around 15 volts and plus minus 50 volts. So this part has no regulator, it's just a full bridge rectifier that turns the AC into DC. And here is the plus minus 30 volt part, it's a full bridge rectifier. And at the output you have plus minus 50 volt DC and then you have a regulator circuit and then you have plus minus 30 volts at the output. So this is what is called a linear regulator. It is used to get a stable low noise output voltage for the rest of the circuit. So in order to troubleshoot this we will need to know the basics of how a linear regulator works. So there's essentially three parts of the circuit. We have the voltage sense circuit, we have the error amplifier transistor and the regulator transistor. So this sense circuit reads the vo output voltage and it sends this information to the error amplifier that is controlling the regulator transistor. So depending on what this sense circuit reads on the output voltage it controls how much current should flow through this transistor and if a lot of current flows through this transistor, you will get a voltage drop across this resistor, which will then turn on the regulator transistor. So if the voltage is too high, it will tell the error amplifier to pull less current, which means that this will not conduct as much. If the voltage is low, it will tell this transistor to let a lot of current through, which will close this transistor and let current flow through it. And it's a similar setup for the negative voltage. We have a circuit that's operating outside its intended operating conditions, like this one. You don't want to have it on more than necessary. So all the troubleshooting that could be done with the circuit off is good. It's a good idea to start looking for shorts in the semiconductors. It's relatively fast to do and you definitely don't want to run your circuit with shorts in them. So I checked all the semiconductors and they seem to be testing fine. So I continued to measure the resistance values. I thought maybe some of the resistor values are off and which causes the regulator to be unstable. But all the resistor values were measuring fine and there was no sign of leaking electrolytic capacitors as well. So when you're measuring all the components and you can't find any component that is obviously broken, a good idea could be to do some research on the semiconductors and see if there's any known problems. Which is exactly what I did. And what I found was that these components, the 2SC1345, they were known to cause high frequency noise in audio circuits when getting old. So what would happen if we get high frequency noise on the collector of this transistor? Well that would mean that the error amplification would not be accurate, but you would get some random deviation on the collector, which would result in random deviation on current flowing through this transistor which could result in the voltage jumping up and down like we see here. So it could very well be that problem we are seeing. Now after replacing the faulty error amplifier transistors, we will measure the voltages. Now we can see we have stable positive and negative voltages. Tracking down these component specific problems can be quite tricky. The components might be behaving in a way that's hard to predict unless you know the specific problems. So if you're stuck on your troubleshooting, it might be a good idea to do some research on the components in the circuit. Because sometimes components have known issues. Also given that the failure of this unit was due to a component problem that gets worse with age, it's quite likely that this is not the only unit that has this problem.